Hello, it's Bob Buter, author of Meditation for Your Life, director of the Yoga Life Institute in Devon, Pennsylvania. I'd like to share a few words regarding the final part of our book and connect it to the third part. Now, the final part discusses resources and ways of joining a meditation group, and that's based on your experimentation with a variety of types of meditation that are mentioned. There's six styles that are mentioned in the book. You can see them on the back cover, and the styles are breath, visualization, mantra, devotion, contemplative inquiry, and mindfulness. So I'm going to define them very briefly, and then I want to suggest ways and stress and emphasize the importance of joining a group. So as I've mentioned in the intro video, the purpose of the book is to try to help you find the type of meditation that suits you best. Once you've found that, we recommend joining one of the groups that specializes in that same practice. So breathing meditation, focus on the breath, Visualization would be a visual image. It's different from a journey, but more a specific image. Uh, mantra meditation focuses on re the repetition of a specific word that has a deep meaning. Uh, the devotional way would, could be summarized more clearly, perhaps, by prayer that you'll find at most religious places. And when we say prayer, we mean the onset of a prayer, but a contemplative approach to prayer where the person praying is listening for a large or for the bulk of the time. But there is the relational aspect going on. And then we talk about contemplative inquiry, where you focus on a specific topic or question more into an intellectual way and you examine that question, there's typically no concrete answer to the question you examine, so your mind gets wrapped around it and that can lead to a real quiet mind. Now those five that I've just highlighted are all what we call concentration techniques. And that's where you know you think of you here and then you're focused on another point and the two are trying to connect, you're concentrating on one thing. And every time you have a, an errant thought, you go back to your concentration point. The second type of meditation, if you were to draw meditation into two categories, would be called mindfulness meditation. It's become very popular and been studied a lot recently in medical settings, and there's a lot of good research to uh, explain the benefits of mindfulness meditation. That's where you're aware of everything. It's not concentration-based, although a similar effect will occur on you that your witnessing mind will not become entangled in all of your thoughts. Those are these six types. As you experiment with them, what I recommend is that you find a group if you look and research meditation, you will always see people meditating together. Meditation itself is a solitary individual experience, but it is very difficult and coping with our mind can get tricky. So support from a group is highly recommended. And I don't, I don't even know if I want to say highly recommended. It's almost impossible to be successful if you try to meditate on your own. So therefore, I'm recommending be with a group, at, le at the least have a meditation buddy, somebody that you can discuss what's going on in your inner world. And it's very helpful to gain insights while we share what's going on with ourselves. And then it's also very easy to listen to somebody and offer some suggestions because of our um, unbiased perspective. So those are some reasons for you to join a group. Now, if you live in a very rural area and you don't have uh, much support. These days there is, there are some online sources 
So you can look online, you know, you can Google the type of meditation that you're interested in. You can look up books on those practices. The other thing you can do if you don't have the opportunity for a weekly gathering is that you can attend a retreat or a weekend program or a day-long program and make a little bit of a trip out of it and gain some inspiration, then go into your home practice and follow it that way. A couple of things to notice. Um, first, I like to let everybody know that meditation may be taught for a low fee or a high fee. And typically what we recommend, similar to what the Buddha said about everything related to meditation, uh, is that there should be a middle path. If you're going to go to a class, there needs to be a payment for the place and the instructor. So we do think there needs to be a fee. If it's an exorbitant fee, uh, we don't recommend you get going broke over learning meditation. And likewise, there are some groups that will offer meditation for free. Then you have to make sure that there will be some level of quality in that program. But in many cases, if the meditation group is for free, typically there'll be still a rent that's being paid and you'll be you know, expected to make a donation. So always think that there may be some cost involved in your meditation, but it shouldn't be a deal breaker and you don't need to pay a lot of money necessarily to have a group support for your meditation. So hopefully you'll be able to use Meditation for Your Life as this gateway book that gives you a chance to learn about all the groups. We're supporting them all and we're just recommending that you experiment and find the one that works for you best. So wishing you a happy journey.